Okay, um, I'm going to show you how to plot the mean variance frontier uh, for a portfolio management problem um, as you were asked to do in the problem set number two um, when you have two assets. Okay, so we are going to start with our two assets. Uh, in the homework, you're asked to do two assets uh, whose name were Dell and IBM. But I'm going to pick our two favorite assets that are Tesla and Waste Management. Okay, uh, so the important thing is that at this stage uh, in the class, uh, we have uh, two things. Cheers. Uh, we are given expected return and standard deviation of these assets. Okay, so I'm just going to make up some numbers. I'm not going to solve uh, the problem for you. Uh, and I'm going to assume that Tesla is a great stock and has uh, average return of 25%. Expected returns here. Don't mind my uh, clicky keyboard. Uh, and then the standard deviation or risk of Tesla is actually quite high at 0.4%. Uh, Waste management is kind of a boring stock. It has a 10% return and a risk of uh, 20%. The last thing you need to know if you're going to do a portfolio, you need to figure out what's the correlation with the of these two assets. Okay, so we're gonna correlation between TSL and WM. And we're going to pick sort of like a random number. Uh, how is garbage correlated to Tesla? Well, that's a good question, but I'm just going to assume they are relatively highly correlated just for uh, the sake of it. All right, so we have all this information. Now I'm going to move on to uh, the portfolio uh, side of the problem. Okay, the portfolio side of the problem, uh, we are going to uh, start with some uh, portfolio weight, right? That's what we're on the uh, think about. So the first one is the weight on uh, Tesla here and then the other one is going to be the weight on waste management. Okay, so weight on Tesla, you know, I'm gonna be uh, generous. I say we can sh uh, short Tesla uh, from minus 2 to minus 1.95. I'm gonna go in increments and that I'm gonna this is going to describe like many, many portfolios up until uh, let's say 1.5 or something. All right. Okay, so what does it mean here? It means that you are short 200% uh, of Tesla. So you short 200 times, uh, two times your wealth on Tesla. Uh, what does it mean for waste management? Well, we know that the sum of uh, the portfolio weight has to add up to one. So t the weight on waste management is just going to be one minus H2 here. So it's 300% or three, and then we're just gonna have this portfolio go all the way down like this. All right, so now here comes the, uh, I would say, relatively hard step. We need to figure out what's the expected return on our portfolio. Right. If I want to build my frontier, I need two things. I need an expected return and I need risk. Okay, so then we're going to focus on the variance of the portfolio here. All right, so what's the expected return? Well, the expected return is what? It's going to be equal to the weight that I put on Tesla. So that's H2 here. You can see the blue cell times what? Times the uh, expected return on Tesla. So note that I want to be careful here and make sure this is a fixed cell. So that's H2 times B2 plus the weight on waste management I2 times uh, B3, uh, which is also a fixed cell. Okay, so if I short Tesla 200%, uh, invest 300% on waste management, well, not surprisingly, have negative return because Tesla has higher return than waste management, okay? Do this uh, all along. I just slide my uh, <coughs> formula down downwards and I get a set of uh, expected returns for my portfolio depending on the weights that I've picked 
uh, here. All right, so now for the variance, well, that's the harder formula, but uh, hopefully you have your formula sheet with you and you can see that the variance of the portfolio is what? It's the weight on Tesla, right? It's sum of the uh, square variances times the weight plus the covariance. So the, it's the weight on Tesla, H2 square, okay, times what? Times the standard deviation on Tesla, which is C2 square, plus what? Plus the weight on wage management square times the risk, the standard deviation of wage management, waste management, sorry, square, plus two times the covariance, the, sorry, the correlation between waste management and Tesla, which is cell D2 here, times the standard deviation of Tesla times the standard deviation of waste management. Okay, so let's recap what we have here. We have the square weight. See if we have this right. I have the square weight on Tesla times the variance on Tesla plus the square weight on waste management times the square weight on waste management plus two times the correlation between Tesla and waste management and standard deviation, standard deviation. Well, it turns out I actually forgot something. I forgot to put the uh, weight. So I'm going to go back, edit that, and say that H2 times I2 here again. Okay, and that's the formula for the uh, variance of my portfolio. And then, you know, I don't need to do this like that many times. I'm just going to Again, you can see the variance moves. Uh, at the beginning, I short Tesla, so I have relatively high uh, variance. Uh, but as I actually invest more in waste management, which is less risky, right, uh, my uh, risk uh, varies. Okay, well, actually, what matters to us is not so much uh, the variance as the standard deviation of the portfolio aka the risk okay so let's just look at that uh, well that's just the square roots sqrt of the variance okay so that's actually fairly simple uh didn't really have to do any formula work uh there and now i am ready to uh, draw my uh efficient frontier okay so the efficient frontier well it's going to plot uh expected return of my portfolio against the standard deviation, okay? So I'm gonna go into my insert and pick the scatter plot here, and that's what I like. Uh, well, here I have something white, but maybe we'll figure out uh, a way of selecting the data right here. All right, so I select my data. Name's going to be Efficient Frontier. What do I want on X? Okay, so on X, what I'm going to select is the standard deviation, right? That's the X axis. Sometimes uh, can get a little bit confusing, and we can think that the X should really be the expected return, but the expected return is really the Y and not the X. Okay, so we have this cell K, uh, column K is Y, column M standard deviation is X, and Let's hope for the best. Well, nothing really happens. Let me try this again. Oh, right, let me try this a different way. This was kind of a, a bummer. Let's just start from the beginning. So I'm going to select those cells and I'm going to control select those others and I'm going to directly once I've selected those, insert my scatter plot. Voila, well, except it doesn't really look like the right thing. Uh, let's look at what this plot is. Well, this plot is kind of the right thing, except that the X values are now the return on the portfolio and the Y value the standard deviation. So I need to flip this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna modify these so that I have M column on the x-axis and the k column on the y-axis. 
All right, and then you have uh, your efficient frontier, right? You kind of see this bullet shape as I move the weights from uh, Tesla to waste management. I really get this sort of like nice uh, parabola or bullet shaped figure that really defines our investment opportunity set, right? So hope you uh, find this uh, useful and you can use the spreadsheet to really uh, try to solve uh, the problem set. Thank you.